everyone. Hi friends, my name is Freerider number three, and before we start, you need to subscribe or appreciate this video, like this video, because this setup is all fake. None of this is real. That does not belong there. It's on a trash can. This is balancing on a mop, and none of these pillows actually belong here. I'm still moving in. Don't worry, I'm not dead. I'm just trying to survive. I know school is starting soon, but not for me. Last time I did one of these review videos, I went through that show in one day and it's not healthy. I'm just that person who will read anything super quickly, okay? I have read over a hundred books in one year at some point. That was middle school. I have not gone back to that dark age. I will watch an entire series of a show instantly. So y'all have asked me constantly to watch Semantic Error. Read Semantic Error. What? What is that about? Why is it called that? And you'll find out soon. But like, I had no idea what it was about going into it. The only thing I knew recently was, oh, it's about some queers. So if you don't know what Semantic Error is, it's a webcomic. So if you don't know what those are, basically it's a book with images. It's very in right now with the youth. <laughs> they're easy to read. Usually have hot people in it and they're, they're fun. Sometimes the plot is below Jesus at this point and he's buried by the way. Oh, is he? I don't know. I don't know that story. And I'm familiar with all this stuff, but what intrigued me specifically to this was it's about the gays. They're Asian, specifically Korean, and it has a good plot. And I was like, oh, now I'm interested. There's also a show, but I'm not gonna talk about that in this video because I'm a firm believer you should read something before you watch something. And I've already read all of it in one day. I read it last night. So while it's fresh in my mind, I'm gonna go over everything. And it's an ongoing series, so there's only two seasons so far. The next one does come out in the next month, so I will be doing a follow-up. And I might even talk about the show, who knows? If you're wondering where to read this, I went on Manta Comics, which is also partnering with me for this video. Isn't that so convenient? So it's an app, you can download it for free, and you can read this for free. But if you want the unlimited version, I do have a link where the first 20 people who click it will get to read, and basically that means you have no limits. If you do want to read for free, you can only read one chapter every 24 hours after the first nine because they, you got to be patient, okay? They're saying if you want to read this in all one day, you have to pay and support the company. There's a ton of other comics that I have yet to read, and if you want me to, let me know. And let me know if you want me to do more reviews about them. Remy. What is it? Do you see what that cat is doing? Look at this rat. Y'all get a seven day free access to try it out. So click it while you still can. Sorry to the people who don't have my notifications on. You missed out. So we're gonna get started. They go in chapters, or technically episodes. I'm calling them chapters. I don't care what you say. I'm reading it. Plus it, there's something called prologue. So first off, the prologue. I didn't research this before. I had no idea what was gonna happen. So I went in blind and let's just say I was convinced this was going to turn into a <clears throat> because what, what am I looking at? Why are we about to kiss already? It's just a way to suck you in, you know? They're like, you want this? You want to see these two men kiss? Keep reading. And it worked. I kept reading. So chapter one, we meet the main character, Sangwoo Chu. I'm so sorry if I pronounce it wrong. Obviously, I'm American. If it's Sangwoo, I fully will admit fault. He's a college sophomore, and he's presenting his final project by himself because it's technically a group project. However, you already learn he's antisocial. He doesn't really care to have friends. He's shy, introverted and he is not afraid to call out his group members. And I relate, because I've been there. So at the end of his presentation, he's like, all of this was done by me. None of my group members helped. They were all doing something. They were seniors, either missing classes or apparently grieving over a great aunt who died. He's not afraid to burn the bridges Taylor Swift worked so hard on making. Also quick note of the outfit, appreciate it, okay? It's it's glitchy because I wanted to go with the aesthetic of Semantic Error. You'll see it very soon. I even matched my makeup. We also learned he's a gamer. He loves game development. He wants to create his own 2D game and he's working with this girl right now, but she apparently had a dropout. I think her name was Soo Young. But she's like, no, 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 don't worry. I got a friend who will help you. His name is Jae Young Jae. Chapter two, we learned about his side. He's a senior, he's very hot. <laughs> He makes that known, very confident with his skills as a designer. He comes across as this know-it-all who's like chilled, laid back, but he's also very good at what he does and a little bit cocky. So he draws his thing really fast in front of Sangwoo. Mind you, he showed up late, like 45 minutes late to the meeting. And Sangwoo's like, oh my God, you did this? And I looked at it, I was like, this is a carrot. No, this is the little like carrot with a face. Maybe I wasn't supposed to zoom in, but I did. And do you remember that person 
that Sangu blocked earlier. He's like, you know, this is one of my group members who didn't bother to show up to class, so I tattletailed to the teacher, and the teacher said, don't worry, I'll let him know. Yeah, that's that's Jay Young. It's the same guy. And because he tattletailed on Jay, <laughs> I might keep calling him that. But he wasn't allowed to graduate because he missed those two credits because he failed that class. And he finds out Sangu tattletailed because he goes to his phone, he puts in his number, and he's like, I already have your number. Wait, why is your contact Free Rider 3? You know what, I'm gonna call your number. Turns out Sang Woo is labeled motherfucker in Jay Young's contact. So of course Sang Woo runs away. Because it's very like him to run away from his problems. This is a very common theme you find out throughout the series. But he also unblocks his number just to see what did he text. Which, what phone works like that? Ex if I unblock these numbers, will I finally get the thousands of texts I missed? No. But Jay Young already texted him again. He's like, hey, let's just talk. I already know who you are. You're 25 years old. And first of all, 25 and you're a junior? What is this? I, I graduated before I was 21. I graduated before I could legally drink. I don't know how college works in Korea. Maybe they're just generally older, but just know they're like 25 and... I think Jae Young is 27 or something. They're not like us youngins. And also, not the subtle shade of you saying you have no friends, you've never participated in student unions. He knows he's lonely. Way to rub that in one more time. But he's like, hey, I just want to be friends with you. I want to be cordial. Let's just meet up, talk it out. I promise I won't hurt you. And saying was like, mmm, fine. But I will call the cops if you hurt me. So chapter three, I'm going to call this the heat chapter because first we see Jae Young at an office area and it's actually a restaurant. So there's a bunch of these cafes apparently where you can just work at a desktop, your laptop, and people will serve you food and you don't have to talk to them. Where can we get that here? I would like more of that here right now, please. But I initially was very confused. I was like, why are they there? But anyway, Sangwoo works at this restaurant and he sees someone orders spicy firework ramen and it's Jaeyoung. And to sum it up, they had an argument and it sort of went like this. You're a f***ing flop for not trying to contribute to the group project. So yes, I'm not sorry for tattletelling you. I'm not sorry for writing you out to the professor because guess what? You're a senior. This is college. Life's not fair. And I don't understand why you're trying to be nice to me. I'm not gay like you, okay? I'm not into this male stuff. So I don't want to be your friend. I don't want to talk to you. Get away from me. I don't like you, but you're also hot. I don't need you for my game especially. I can do this on my own. I just want to be nice and honest with you, but I am receiving currently zero nada from you. So could you mind just apologizing for actually writing me out because it was just a simple thing. We could have talked it out and it was just two credits. And now because of you, I can't go study abroad and I had to come back all the way here to finish college one more time. So because of you, I can't pursue my future because your petty ass couldn't handle the group project by yourself and you're just a tattletale whiny baby. So what if I'm a whiny baby? Once again, I'm not sorry at all. I have no feelings for you. I don't want to be your friend. And then they agree to never meet again. <laughs> so that's the end of the chapter. And I don't know if it's on purpose, but like my nosy ass is like, he wears a lot of red. It symbolizes passion. It symbolizes, you know, lust, romance. It makes sense why he ordered spicy firework ramen. And also Sangwoo is known for wearing like dark colors, always black, if not navy blue. Cold, you know, no personality in there, just robotic which matches his personality and black is a lack of color so red is this passion that's going to go into the black hole <laughs> let me shut up chapter four saying was walking to class he's helping this woman who dropped her boxes and her name is ga i think we're gonna other pronunciation it's right here though and she's like oh my god thank you so much let me treat you to lunch as a payment it's a nice restaurant they didn't just go to the cafeteria turns out the waiter is Jae Young. But Sang Woo initially doesn't recognize him because one, he doesn't have his glasses on, which I guess, I don't know, are we different people without them? I need these back. I feel naked without them now. I might as well super glue them. But Sang Woo is the type of person who is just like, if you're not important to me, I don't even care to remember your face nor your name because I don't need you in my life. And even though he doesn't recognize him, he still tells this waiter, could you go do your fucking job please and stop staring? What? <laughs> The nerve! On to chapter 5. I'm going through this very fast. I'm doing a summary, y'all. I literally put down in my script, please read this section. Is there anything you hate? You. Any color you hate? Red. The color of errors. What about animals? Homo sapiens. Food? Pasta. Places? Anywhere within a 10 foot radius of you. So please piss off. And instead of getting mad, Jayon's like, mm, you know, I hope you have a great semester. So when it starts, Sang was like, I wonder what he meant by that. And he tries to sit in lecture and he always goes to this perfect seat which in my opinion is the back of the class but no Sangwoo's like on the right side in the middle center of the lecture hall 
Sure. Whatever floats your boat. But the point is, Sangwoo has this very dedicated schedule. He's like, 9.16, I'm at the door. I eat lunch for 22 minutes. It's a five minute walk to this. He's never late on anything. So when he finds out that there's this backpack in front of his perfect spot, he's like, why would anyone take this spot? Who do you think took this spot? Yeah, it was Jayeon. So things go awry using my diction from YA novels. Never have I ever used that in real life. Jae Young is in the same class as him and sits next to him in order to bother him so we can't concentrate in class anymore. Chapter 6 is a flashback from Jae Young's point of view on how he initially met Sang Woo, like long before they actually had this interaction. The first time he ever met him was at a bar where Sang Woo was still a sophomore and he was with his senior group friends and his senior friend was like, you need to drink. And he's like, I don't feel like it. I'm not drinking. He pisses off this senior, the senior threatens to hit him, and Sang was like, you hit me, I call the police. And Jayon's like, whoa, 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 don't call the police, I'll step in, and he basically defends him. But that was his only interaction. What he did remember though was that neck. There was this pale, long, smooth neck. I understand, look, we work hard for, some necks just look prettier, okay? Mine's pretty. The next time he saw him was in another class, and he was in front of his desk, and he's like, Oh, I recognize that smooth, luxurious, pale, delectable neck. That's it. That's all I wrote for this chapter. The next chapter is a similar thing. It's just learning more of these experiences of him running into Sangwoo and just getting a vibe of like, this guy is robotic, no personality, but why does he make an impression on me? We learn that he's this top tier designer who like won awards across seas. He was planning to study abroad, but he couldn't because he didn't graduate because of that project fail. Yeah, I bet you'd love to give him that spanking. Hey. Listen, always have consent when you're gonna do the freaky, deaky, ooky, spooky. This is the spooky, ooky, kooky, and creepy special edition. So chapter eight, we learn more about Jay's personality. He hates total indifference, which is literally Sangwoo. He loves making impressions on people, maybe even a physical one, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Please put duct tape on my mouth. And I swear, every time I read something online like this, there's always this moment where it's like, it just text, there's a little bubble, and the background's like, sparkles or iridescent, and it always has something to do about romance. So, of course, same thing. Jay Young's like, I'm gonna make sure I leave a lasting impression on this boy. And it's so petty, in chapter 9, he enrolls in every single class that Sang Woo has taken. How does he know this? because when Sangu initially ran away, he left his notebook with his schedule. What does he have to lose? He has to graduate again. He's doing literally nothing else. Y'all wish you could have someone to annoy you as much as this guy. Y'all wish your crush would do that much for you. Actually, I did do that. I did do that with Keanu to graduate early. He both graduated a year early. But I mean, this is annoyance to another extent. Jae Young bought all of Sangu's favorite coffee, which no one apparently buys. That's like if someone bought all the kombucha at a store. No one would but me. He learned his schedule because all he did was ask around, like the librarian. Hey, when does this guy with a black hat and black clothes come in? What does this guy always get at this grocery store? And of course they know because people make impressions on others. Sangmu might not believe that because he himself doesn't care to have these impressions affect him. But what he doesn't realize at first is people around him are affected by him. And that comes up later. I'll talk about that later. So chapter 10, they're in the library. and. What the fuck is he re- Excuse me? What is that? Maybe I should stop zooming in, but it doesn't look like studying to me. They even have pixel art in this, which I'm like, I love the fact that this whole semantic error, the title, they do tell you what it is, but basically it's like when you have code and you don't see the problem, but it's there. Your code is technically perfect. You see that there are no flaws, but there's something wrong with it still. And it took me this long. It took me up to this chapter to realize that the graphic and semantic error, like, one of it symbolizes Sangwoo, the other, which is Era, symbolizes Jaehyun. One's just code, black and white, the other one is colorful, design, ah, gay, rainbow. They describe it as an elusive error that shows up in your code even though you see no flaws. So this is just Sangwoo. Even though he sees no flaws in his life, especially in himself, there's this error for no reason. And going off of that, like, I just like that in a lot of these scenes, they just go with this code glitch effect. They, they go with this aesthetic, like the pixel art, love that. I've never seen that before in a comic. It feels like a game, and there's also a lot of other scenes you'll see where there's like just a bunch of glitches behind it. So chapter 11, Sangwoo falls asleep for the first time ever just because he's tired of this routine. He can't concentrate and study or sleep. So Jae Young draws a... I wrote moustache, it's a mustache. And this is the point where Sangwoo's like, what, what do you want from me? Why are you doing this to me? Why are you in my life? And he's just like, 
I just want to be your friend. At first I wanted to annoy you, but like I actually just wanted to be your friend in the first place. Now I'm just bothering you so you could just say sorry, but also I would be your friend if you weren't such a cunt. But the next day he's actually able to sit next to someone who isn't Jae Young. It's the girl he helped boxes with, GA. Because Jae Young was nowhere to be found apparently. So while they're walking away, he glances him and he's like, I see you from very far away, but how do I even know it's you? Like, you've been in my life so much now that I'm starting to recognize you from across the campus. Let me run the other way. And they actually talk to each other. Like, he shows emotion for the first time. He's not just being a robot anymore. So, on to chapter 13. They're at lunch. sing tells her, hey, there's this bully that's been in my life. She's like, are you sure it's a bully? Are you sure that's what bullying means? And regardless, like, you can just buy coffee online. You can get earbuds when you're in class. Or you can get this desk divider when you're studying in the library. Like, she gives him ways to get around this obstacle, the error. But of course, while they walk out, he sees Jae Young again, and this time Jae Young goes after him, so Sang Woo runs away. Again, chapter 14, they kept running, and they eventually get tired. They fall onto the grass, and Sang Woo's like, why do you keep bothering me? And Jae Young says, you know what, I'll stop bothering you if you can make an acrostic poem for me, which I did not know what that meant. I had to look it up. Listen, if you don't know what something means, do not be ashamed to dictionary it. So acrostic is a poem, word puzzle, or any other composition in which certain letters in each line form a word. And basically he says, make an acrostic poem of my name, and if it's artistic enough, I will leave you alone. Obviously that's just him messing with him, but he wanted him to think. And also this was specifically to make sure that sang remembers his name finally, because initially he didn't even remember his face. Still didn't know his name. You can read the poem. But looking back, that's actually a really smart way of you being able to make an impression because that's all Jae Young wanted. He wanted to make an impression on Sang Woo and be remembered. But then he talks to himself. He's like, why am I still chasing this guy? Actually, I get a thrill for chasing him. I like the hunt. He didn't say that. He said something more sweet of, I just want him to see me as the fun upperclassman I am. Chapter 15, they have a group project coming up in class and somehow Jae Young is the TA. And also, he gets to assign the group member, so of course, they're together. The project is to do a skit in Chinese, and sang initial idea was Ugh, boring. Jae Young says, why don't we do this instead? And he actually admits, like, hey, that's not a bad idea. That's like me telling a pride logo, you know what, that isn't ugly. Chapter 16 through 18, I read them so fast, I just mashed them all together. Literally, at some point, it just took a minute to read one of these chapters. If you're a fast reader, it's easy. It really brought out like the inner, we called ourselves bookies in middle school. I don't want to talk about it. When you've read through Harry Potter seven times, you learn a thing or two about how to read fast. I didn't read Attack on Titan in one sitting to not do this. So in short, Jae Young starts to lighten up to sang -woo. He's like, hey, you want one of these coffees that I initially bought from you because they're so disgusting? Here, have one. He offers to go hang out to play basketball. He still manages to annoy Sangmu even with the new tech, the earbuds and desk divider. But also he manages to change Sangmu's schedule because once again, he's on a strict, I do this, I do this. They called it an OCD personality. I just think it's meticulous. There is a flashback of Sangmu getting diagnosed on if he has OCD or not. And they're like, we don't think it's necessarily OCD or any disorder. You just don't like people. There's nothing wrong with your frontal lobe. You just don't care to remember things that aren't important to you. And that's subjective of what's important to him. And also he just likes a good schedule. He likes to be on top of things. Maybe not in the bedroom. But anyways, Jae Young manages to get Sang Woo off track. Literally, he's like, hey, you can do your walk later. We're going this way. They're buying costumes for their skit. And Jae Young's like, why do you always wear that hat? Take that stupid hat off. He's able to even take it off. Sang Woo doesn't even care that he took off the hat he's like if you want the hat have it but he only freaks out when Jae Young becomes this close he leans in just to touch his hair and that freaks out Sang Woo and he runs away only that part where he leans in so just some highlights here are some glitch effects that I saw throughout usually it happens when Sang Woo is going through a lot of emotions because it's like you know glitch error I don't know what to do with my feelings even in most scenes when the setting changes oh, look at me using those words. In what world do I say, you know what, let's change the setting. Let's go outside. No, but every time they're like, oh, going to the library with the error. So they keep that aesthetic going on. Also, that was 100% an innuendo and you cannot tell me otherwise. So chapter 19, we see that Jae Young can also skateboard, cause why not? We already drew him attractive. Now we're going to draw him with a skateboard and add sparkles. He even likes cats. Like, <laughs> and also saying was still is able to associate everything with him. He like turns a corner and he's like, oh, was that him? No, it's just a trash can. So 
he associates Jae Young with trash. But basically, Jae Young is getting into his mind where it's like he now just expects to be around him every day. Then there's a Christmas special. It's like an in between episode. I just assume it was during Christmas. This is the past, like when they were young, eight years old, basically. And that's when Jae Young initially got his skateboard. That's how we learned he likes skateboarding. It was a gift from Santa. And also, we learned why Sang Woo hates the color red so much. I'm not gonna talk about it. You should read it, okay? I think it was something petty about red ink, which, yeah, very Taylor Swift moment. Chapter 20, this is a very juicy chapter. <laughs> Sang Woo's at his part time job again, the restaurant office thing. And Jae Young is there and he orders three separate things. He's like, this ramen, this drink. I'm gonna order a bunch of things so you have to come be a busboy and, you know, do my bidding. Then he plays dumb by saying his laptop is broken, like, oh, it won't turn on. I wonder what I should do. Maybe I need to go get it fixed by taking it in. Sang was like, no, let me fix this. I'll do it. This is a very backwards way of trying to get someone to go on a date with you, but basically Jae Young's like, hey, as a thank you, why don't you go to the movies? And Sang was like, why would I go to the movies with you, nasty? Which he says, why would you assume it was me? I just said you should go to the movies. I was gonna give you two tickets to take whoever you want. If you want to go with me, just say so. And then they say goodnight, and this time Sang Woo actually says goodnight back to him. He doesn't say that, but he says you too. Chapter 21, they're working on the script for the skit. Jae Young's even nicer. He's like, hey, you need to work on this pronunciation. Like, this is not how you speak Chinese. And listen, if I was in that position, I would purposely speak Chinese even worse just so you can help me out. But Sang Woo just thinks to himself, hey, the error is becoming even nicer now, and there's even more sparkles. He even notices that Jae Young started touching his head more, he's patting his hat, you know, giving more physical attention, and he's uncomfortable with it. He's like, I would like to tell him that I don't like this, but he's just thinking that to himself. And then this is where the prologue happens, where Jae Young's like, if you just wanted to get drinks with me, just say so. To which Sang Woo's like, why would I want to get drinks with the likes of you? <gasps> Burrito! Wait, give me the cat. It's a burrito cat. You're a squid. You're a squid. You're so useless. <laughs> so he refuses. The next chapter, Jae comes into class hungover, decides to go home early, and also total Heartstopper moment right here. If you didn't watch my review of Heartstopper, go watch that first, but basically Sang Woo was going to type something more sweet, changed it three different times so that you know what he's feeling, and then he just replies with okay. He also runs into GA and he asks her, Does Jayla have a girlfriend? Why do you care? Huh? What makes you curious? Chapter 23, the three get lunch together, and Jayon wants to get a feel for what GA wants. I also, like, what are these J names? Basically, he wants to know, Do you like him too? Because if so, fuck off. He's mine. He even says, My Sang Woo at some point in this chapter. And there's also a very rude moment of him saying, are you wearing more makeup today? Are you expecting someone? Which like, first of all, I did all of this for me to feel good and to match the shirt. Later, he does admit he was being an ass because he basically, he just said that to a girl six years younger than him. But he's like, if she wasn't so interested in him, I wouldn't be this angry. He's very protective over saying Woo. Also, at some point, there's just like very detailed pictures of specifically Jae Young. It's like SpongeBob, but the opposite effect. You know, this one's ugly, but like this, extra hot. Like, what is this? What is this? And then he asks Sang Woo, what kind of girl do you like? You like any girls? Chapter 24 and 25 mesh these together. They finished their skit. It went great. But Jae Young's like, hey, I'm actually going to make you the next CA because unfortunately I have to drop out of this class. I literally just took it just to annoy you, but I have to leave soon. I'm going to study abroad in four months. So I got to focus on that. And Sang Woo's like, oh, thanks for this opportunity. But on the inside, he's like, why do I feel frustrated? But then one day, Jae Young is in the lecture. He's like, what are you still doing here, Sang Woo? And then when he sits down, Sang Woo's like, wait, why do I feel suddenly calm? Am I calmer now just because of Jae Young? Have I become so accustomed to this man in my life that I now rely on him in order to study? This time though, Jae Young leans in to say something and he gets too close to the point where Sang Woo has a physical reaction. He gets a, a little, pointer down there. I don't know what I'm allowed to say on here or not. I mean, I did already say a lot of curse words, but point is he had an actual reaction to his presence, which made him run away again. All Jae Young said was, do you want to go to the movies with me? And also just look at this image. Like, yeah, the men are hot. The women are hot. Everyone's hot in most of these comics, but the art's also good. It gets to the point though, where Sang was like, I don't know what I'm feeling. Like this isn't normal for a human body. 
if I'm feeling like this, I have to figure this out first or else I won't be able to concentrate. You know what? I'm just gonna take the semester off. It's fine. It's just six months. My career will wait. You know, it might fuck up my entire schedule, but I have to figure this first. Actually, I do know some people who would do that, but it's just the fact that Sangwoo is this type of person. He's like, if something is messing up my life, I have to figure that out first because nothing messes up my life. This is not normal. I've never had this experience. He has to deal with the error at hand before being able to function as a human being afterwards. Chapter 26 and 27. Jae Young is nowhere to be found because he was so offended by saying we're running away, he took that as like, you know what? Maybe I shouldn't be with him. Maybe we shouldn't see each other. And saying we was able to get back into his routine, he's like, I finally freed this error, I'm back to normal. But his routine is more boring now. He's like, I'm doing what I normally do, but why does it feel empty? Why do I feel lonely inside? Playing games is not fun anymore which I zoomed in, it's League of Legends. First of all, who genuinely has fun playing that game? Like, unless you play with five friends and don't care, no. Second of all, I just want to reiterate, I was Diamond 1 in TFT on an iPad, so I think that makes me at least masters on the desktop because like, obviously, this is harder. Just a little flex. What I'd get out of that, nothing. And at some point, Sang was walking around and he sees this figure in the distance, like, very far away and he knows it's Jayon. He's like, wait, how do I even know that's him? I never know someone from that far away. Maybe it's because of that tall figure. Maybe it's because of that sleek body. Maybe it's because of that gorgeous smile. So this makes Samu curious and he's like, wait, he probably has an Instagram, right? He stalks him on Instagram. While he's judging him, he's like, oh, this guy's just a poser. He's just being hot. He's just showing his sexy body on camera. He's also taking screenshots of all of these and putting them into a file titled JJ. It's stalker vibes. And he actually does it all night to the point where the sun rises the next day. Then he suddenly realizes, oh my God, in the last 12 days that I have been alone and been frustrated for no reason, it's because I'm not around Jay Young. I need him in my life. He even says, I want it. Not even him, it. So in order to find him again, he invites GA to the same restaurant Jae Young works at. And we also learn Jae Young's point of view, which is, even though this man has been the most annoying person in my life, the weirdest personality, and shows no emotion, for some reason, Remy! Oh my god. For some reason, I still want him. So basically, he's been frustrated as well. And just when he finally thinks he's getting over him, he sees Sang Woo sitting down at the restaurant, and this time, he runs away. Jae Young runs into the back. What a turn of tables. What a twist of turns. <laughs> what a change of events. Chapter 29. This is the end of season one, technically. Sang Woo confronts him. He finds him in the back of the restaurant. He doesn't even say, like, hey, how are you? He just says, I need a designer. You're a good designer. I need you on this team. You can do whatever you want. You have free reign. You call the shots, but I need you on this team. He even calls him, I think it's pronounced Hyung which in my impression it just means like older brother you know like brotherly figure used by males to call other males who are older that's what i got and Jae Young is turned on by this he's like oh my god he never has called me this i only call myself that to tease him i get it you know people get kinky with that stuff Sangwoo even smiles when he accepts his offer and his last thing he said was i'll call you later Hyung." which like how dare- If I was reading this and that was the last thing I could see for the next- I don't know how many months before the next season came out, but like, I'm glad I'm reading this now. But also, I have to wait for the next season now. This was released in 2018, by the way. So the next season, I don't want to say too much of it because like, I'm already giving you the whole plot. You're gonna have to read this at some point. The whole point of this is to get y'all to read on your own. So I'm just gonna give a very quick synopsis. And I'm not spoiling the end, but basically, Yes, it gets very heated. Nothing, not safe for work, okay? It's just kissing. Yes, they do kiss at some point. So to sum up, this is just them working on the game. No college, no school stuff in between. And Singbu creates this very strict schedule. He's like, every day we're going to meet at this time. Your work is going to be due at midnight on this deadline. We don't meet on the weekends. It's basically college. But they said in order to finish this game before you go study abroad in four months, we have to work this hard. And at first, he's not impressed by Jae Young's stuff. He's like, first of all, you missed the deadline. You turned it in late. I had to call you to remind you to send the email. Very professional stuff. And Jae Young's like, oh, you want to be impressed? Oh, I'll impress you. So the next day, he spends all this time working up drafts of the game, working up the design. And it does impress him. It makes him smile. And Jae Young's like, oh, so we, you can smile. I want to see you smile more. 
Eventually, Jae Young invites him to the studio where he works at, and Sang Woo's like, oh my god, it's a mess in here. And they start organizing. Sang Woo basically turns Jae Young into his busboy, makes him do all this bidding. And at some point, Jae Young notices that he has a mole on his neck. He's like, I didn't know you had that before. I want a bite of that. <laughs> what? Whoa. Very 180. What What just happened? Horny jail for you. Also, I think I have a mole on my neck. No? Is it that? I can't see. Am I going to become him? Am I receiving N in this skit? I'm fine with that. Maybe you want to buy two? <laughs> so because they're working side by side so often now, Jao notices more about him. He's like, hey, you have the similar music taste to me. Apparently, you hate this entire track, but you even know that's the whole title and the track number. That's like if someone who hates Taylor Swift, I can't believe I've referenced her three times already, but that's like if someone who hates Taylor Swift says, oh, this is tolerated. Track number five of Folklore. Only crazy people know that, and that, I'm crazy. And then at some point they have this like heart to heart where Sang Woo talks about why he got into game development, why he wants to pursue it, and Jae Young's like, you should keep pursuing your dreams. You'll go far, which makes him blush. Oh, at some point also Sang Woo has said, starting now, if you're going to touch my head or my hat or just me in general, give me hugs, you need to tell me so that I have a minute to prepare. Good for you for standing up for yourself about boundaries and consent, but also a minute. <laughs> Jae Young does respect it and he says, hey, I'm going to pat your head in a minute, so be ready. And when he pats his head, uh, Sang Woo has to run out because it's gonna get a long one. I do have to talk about chapter 35 though, because this is where you learn more about Jae Young as a person. Apparently he has a twin. My mind is going places. <laughs> And he's a cat person. There's also another innuendo right there. And then at one point, at one point during the late night of working, Jae Young is pretending to be asleep and Sang Woo walks up to him. He's like, is he actually asleep? And he leans in and he just kisses him all of a sudden, you know, without consent as well, which is bad. Okay, very Snow White situation here. Then he runs away and then Jae Young pops up and he's like, what the fuck just happened? And Sang Woo's like, what came over me? What made me want to kiss him? Coming y'all, okay, the, the scene from the prologue is coming. Wind it up! They were celebrating, working two weeks with each other. They're at a bar and Jae Young just goes in at some point. He's like, hey, I'm gonna kiss you in one minute. You can either leave or stay. And not even 15 seconds go by. It was 12 seconds before they just smack those cushions together, those pillows. I'm not gonna go too far. This happens in chapter 36. There's also a Taylor Swift reference there, but they kiss and then after that, sang runs away, obviously, again, very like him. Throughout the rest of the chapters, it's just trying to figure out this relationship. I'll let you read the rest because it, it was so good. Like, I I literally read through that at like 3 a.m. last night. That is the end of the plot. I just wanted to go over some things that I thought were like important to touch on. First, we have to talk about the fact that these characters don't even go into romance until like, what, end of season two? How are you gonna drag that on? I think it's just cruel. I know it's effective, but like, you are cruel, okay? Casually cruel for, <laughs> that's the fifth Taylor Swift reference, for making an audience wait until season two to see the romance happen, but you even had the nerve to put it in the prologue, like, who are you? I really like these characters though, I mean, let's first talk about Sing Woo. We already know, robotic, not the person to want friends, doesn't care, just wants to focus on career. We've seen this before, if you're in comp site, I went to engineering school, I've seen these people. They're not all as hot as him, but... We know this character, and we also know that because of Jae Young, his dark soul, because he wears all black, his lack of personality starts to come out, if you will, because Jae Young is this designer, he's very bubbly, he has all this color to him, the red, you know, all of these things that make him a designer, it starts to affect him. This error in his life is the reason that his life became what it is today, which is in our minds better, but in his mind, it was he's still debating about it to this day. I'm waiting to see what happens next. And as for Jae Young, he is this person who always has gotten what he wants, I assume, because you know, when you're confident like that, when you're cocky, when you're already hot and tall, like things come your way. You're able to get accolades and rewards before graduating college, get to study abroad, but Everything stops because you got a little too cocky and you met the wrong person. And they're both actually errors for each other, you know? Like, Jae Young, my life is perfect. I got everything I need until this random ass kid comes in and tattletales on me. Sang Woo, my life has been great. I have nothing to bother. I have no obstacles until this guy happens to be in my life and won't quit annoying me. They're both polar opposites of each other, but they somehow balance each other out. 
and there's four themes that they mention. Specifically, this one is about clash between the characters. It's coming of age and also self-discovery because like, obviously this isn't a high school thing. Y'all know I'm done with high school stuff. But like, this is a similar trope of, you know, someone realizing like, oh, I do like men, not just girls. Because Sangwoo is still very, he's not homophobic, but he's like, he doesn't understand what's going on with his body. And it's not just like a, hey, I'll just shake it up. Like it literally prevents him from functioning as a human. He does cry at some point. I like that they talk about consent at some points as well. Later on, yes, there is like hot stuff that people probably get off to, but there's only like one scene of that. It's much more than just sex, obviously. And it wasn't even sex. It was just kissing and they're shirtless. Which brings me to the other character that I got a problem with, G.A. Love her, okay, she's beautiful. But I do want to see some points where it's like a woman does not have to be in this plot for the sake of another character's romance like you know we saw in heartstopper with what was her name imogen this girl always had to be friend zone because turns out i like this guy more like I, we don't we don't need that anymore i think it even happened in glee at some point with kurt of all people i my memory's fading saying and jay young very fleshed out but ga it's like i feel like it's only just to help the couple they're not a couple the two boys. And I want to know more about her life. You do learn more, like a little bit, like, oh, you met Jae Young back in high school, like when you were very young. You do like Sang Woo. There's things about him, but you, we know that's never going to happen. Maybe it does. I don't know. But like, I'm hopeful for season three. I like what I see so far. I'm just hoping that we don't see an, a case where GA just gets friend zone and it's like left to cry, you know, doesn't get her own plot. I want to see more of her. She's in it a lot, so I assume they're going to add more of her. It is okay for a series, a show, a book to be centered on two characters when it's specific about romance. But if the other characters are only to help facilitate this romance, those characters are not actual characters. Because in my opinion, a character should have more dimensions than just one to help the other person. And obviously, I have to talk about the fact that this is not a common thing that you see in Asia. Yes, I'm American. Yes, most of us talking about this are American, but it did start, like, it did start in Korea, y'all. So for it to become so popular to the point where there's even a show, like, we're seeing the success of K-dramas, of web comics become mainstream now, which is amazing. If you haven't gone into any web comics yet, I highly suggest it. You, you've probably seen stuff similar to it, but don't have that impression of like they're not actually good because I did have that growing up and then I got into fan fiction and I was like and then I got into fan fiction and then YA novels I'm like oh my god it's a whole other world and this is similar except with images this time <laughs> sure they're not as lengthy as a book but that makes them easier to read and you don't feel as bad when you can't finish it but at the same time you gotta wait another year for the next season to come out. So catch up before season three comes out. Give me recommendations because I got nothing else to do. And if you enjoy this video, give it a like. Once again, leave a comment about your thoughts on Semantic Era, what you want me to read next or review. Maybe I'll do the show. I don't know. You tell me, is it worth it? And as always, I love you all and everything is less than three.